We are continuing with design of general purpose industrial helical gear reduction unit. Now, in this module, module 4, this is part 2, we shall consider the mainly the bearing selections and shaping the shafts. In earlier module, we have uh, designed the gears for first stage and second stage, we have selected what will be the module we have finalized the gear data and we have made the preliminary layout. Now, in this lecture, we shall look into the bearing arrangement, how the bearing arrangement is done or in this case in with respect to this problem, we shall learn how the bearings are arranged and selected for the gear units. Now, in this lecture, I shall cover rolling element bearing arrangement on shaft, load centers for bearing supports. That means, once the bearing is selected, we have already made a layout of the gears and then we will put the bearing without knowing whether it will give the life or not, but we have to select on experience some bearing and from there we will find out the load center where the load is acting on the supports. Unless we select that we will not be able to find out what is the load on the bearing support, we will not be able to calculate what will be the life of the bearing, we will not be able to calculate what will be the bending moment on the shafts and how the shaft design will be satisfactory or not. So, that is essential. <coughs> Now, next I will show that layout of a single stage gear box, although in detail drawing will be shown later, but here uh, some idea will be given that how the layout is made. And then layout of intermediate shaft of design gear box, what we have designed gear distance, bearing support distance etcetera. Then bearing life estimation consideration of different factors, how the life is estimated and then typical bearing dimensions, we will we'll look into that load carrying capacity of bearings that is extract from catalog and steps in bearing load estimations and bearing life estimation in revolution and hours. And finally, load on saps from gears that we will recapitulate in this lecture. Now, here a sapt along with the pinion, of course, it is a bevel pinion, it is meeting with a bevel gear. Bevel pinion is meeting with a bevel gear. Now, this shaft as you see this is supported by two bearing 1, 2. Now, this bearing is larger than this bearing because as the load are acting here. So, loads on this these bearings will be more than this bearing that is why a small bearing has been taken. There are recommendations what should be the distance between two bearings because this is mounted in cantilever way. Now, these bearings if you have the idea about the rolling element bearing these are taper roller bearing. Bearings may be others also which I am coming. Then bearing times are chosen taking into account service severity and life. Now, if there is light load probably we can go for light bearing which is ball bearing is light bearing than the cylindrical or taper roller bearing or spherical roller bearing. But if there is more load we have to go for taper roller bearing or spherical roller bearing 
as well as we need to go cylindrical roller bearing also. Now, this is taper roller bearing, other bearings may be used in pair or in combination. Now, taper roller must be used in pair because in one side if it is taper roller, other side also should be taper roller. The reason is that in case of taper roller bearing, this part along with the roller and the inner surface with cage, this is cage, they are assembled. Whereas, this part is separate and that can be brought into mesh. So, if we put other side other bearing, then there is no guarantee that this will mesh. Okay. So, this bearing either this is in this directions or it may be put into opposite directions and these are tightened by a thread so that by a knot on the shaft so that these two under a initial pressure initial load. So, you should remember that if, if we go for taper roller bearing then we have to use in paper pair whereas, for other bearings it is not we are coming next to that. For an example both spherical roller and ball bearing can be combined with cylindrical roller bearing in the other end. Now, to find out the load center we have to how to find out the load center. It is available in the catalog that this point distance of this point from one side, but the procedure is that take the midpoint of this taper roller along the axis central axis and draw this line perpendicular to the central axis we will get this point. These points are the load center for the taper roller bearing. So, in shaft calculations or bearing support calculation we will take this is the span between the two bearings. Now, here a spherical roller bearing is shown and bottom is that cylindrical roller bearing. The cylindrical roller bearing usually that inner is kept to be free that means, this can move this way or that way. It cannot take any axial load, taper roller bearing can take axial load, radial load. Spherical roller bearing also can take axial load and radial load, but cylindrical roller bearing cannot take the axial load. All these three bearings having very high capacity of radial load carrying capacity, may be the taper roller bearing is the highest or cylindrical roller may be the maximum. However, the taper roller bearing can take also high axial load, whereas spherical roller cannot take that much axial load. On the other hand, spherical roller bearing is having the facility that this race this can move this way and that way. Therefore, in true sense if we put the spherical roller bearing both side that might be considered as the simply supported beam. Whereas, if you put cylindrical roller bearing, taper roller bearing or even ball bearing these are actually rigid support. However, the all the bearings having a little bit flexibility in taking the rotation also taper roller bearing may be the less 
highest may be the ball bearing, but with all such bearings for practical purposes we consider the shaft supported with the bearings whether it is ball bearing in pair, whether it is spherical roller in pair, spherical roller with cylindrical roller, ball bearing with cylindrical roller these are all simply supported bearing. So, this is a ball bearing with uh, dim, uh, dimension nomenclature is given. The dimension we need the d small d is the i d of the bearing internal diameter is capital D is the outside o d of the bearing b is the width of the bearing r is the corner radius. So, these informations are required and when we are choosing such bearing we have to think of also how we are locking the bearings. Suppose if we use the taper roller bearing it is fully locked it cannot move right way or left way. What happens if there is a increase in the shaft size due to the heat? So, taper roller bearing will be loaded more. In case of ball bearing in pair, what we can do? We can lock the bearing with the shaft fully and on the housing only one side bearing is locked. That means, positionally it cannot move. Then in that case, if there is some extension or contraction of shaft due to temperature change, so other side bearing will move. On the other hand, that side bearing will not be able to take any axial load. So, as for spherical roller bearing, but best way is that if we use one side ball bearing and other side spherical roller bearing uh, sorry cylindrical roller bearing, then we need to lock only the ball bearing or spherical roller bearing and cylindrical roller bearing may be outer rest is uh, or both the races are locked with housing outer race with housing inner race with the shaft, but that can move. So, because it, it is not capable of taking axial load and this can move. So, that is that would be the best solution, but uh, cylindrical roller bearing if we uh, take a pair with ball bearing cylindrical roller bearing will be slightly expensive. And also the inventory will increase. So, the usually it is the practice is that if possible both the bearings would be same as well as they are of equal size. The sharing the reaction loads by bearing depends also on bearing locking arrangement which I have discussed. With distance between bearing supports, this shaft is considered as simply supported beam in all cases as we have discussed. And in case of uh, cylindrical, spherical and ball bearings, we can simply find out their load center is the middle of along the width of those bearings. Apart from these, there are other bearings, thrust bearing, conical bearing which we are not discussing those bearings are special purpose. Now, we should make a layout and then preliminary bear bearing selection to be done. Layout of single stage gearbox. Now, here it might be only a single stage gearbox in that case only pinion and So, this is the pinion and this is the gear and this is the shaft output shaft this is the input shaft. So, this is input and this is output and so 
after the gears are selected we have taken the 5 millimeter bore width of the for the pinion because there might have some misalignment this means this may go in this directions or it might be in this directions. So, with the mismatch if we take exact width then active width will be less than the width of the pinion or gear if they are same. So, one should be greater than other to take care of that misalignment in the axial directions. Now, why pinion if we take the width of the gear is more than the pinion in that case unnecessarily there will be increase in weight. So, that is why as the size of the pinion is small we take the width of the pinion is higher. Okay, then we consider with a recommended gap we consider what will be the width of the uh, sorry what will be the bearing we can select. Now, this is the intermediate shaft of our gearbox what we have designed. We have taken the module in first stage 3 millimeter and in second stage it is 4 millimeter. So, this is this is the first stage gear and this is the second stage pinion. Now, we will see that this is the layout is made and from there we have considered this shaft. Now, these are the roller bearings this may not be taper roller bearing in this case we are not going for the taper roller bearing. So, these are not taper roller bearing and this gap may be kept even less than 10 millimeter, but in common practice usually it is kept 10 to 15 millimeter. We have to keep in mind that here here the another gear is meshing with that pinion. So, this gear and this gear will have relative motion. So, they should not foul or a, if a particles come in between they should not rub that is why this gap is taken sufficiently large 10 millimeter is sufficient, but one can go for 15 millimeter also. Now, similarly these two sides to be in safe side that we have to lock we may need to lock this bearing or this bearing or both. Therefore, we should keep sufficient space because when we will consider the housing sometimes the housing is body is made like this. So, that this is kept locked from this side because there will be if, if we do not keep a space we will not be able to provide the steps or as well as we will not be able to arrange anything. So, this is essential 50 and left side 53 and we have considered also the width of the uh, bearing is we may consider something between 20 to 25 in the first attempt. So, suppose if we take a bearing of 22 millimeter and later we find 25 millimeter still we can keep the span 178 and this gap will be slightly reduced if it is more also the same way we can keep maintain the dimensions. 
and bearing widths as I have already told then final distances are marked as 53, 50 and 178. Now, we shall consider what is the life of the bearing. Life uh, first of all equivalent load on the bearing which is acting on the bearing can be expressed P is equal to C 1 within parenthesis x v f r plus y into f a. What are these? C 1 is a factor of nature of shock load. If this C 1 can be taken 1, if there is no shock load, maybe for a heavy shock load it can be taken 2 and we can choose any value in between that. that. That is usually recommended by the manufacturers of the bearing as well as depending on the load sometimes over this the manufacturer of care units also they consider this value, they choose this value accordingly. Now, V is outer rest rotating factor which is one for if the outer rest is fixed. In normal case, normal gearboxes outer rest remain fixed. So, it is 1 and in case of epicyclic gearing, in, uh, in, in case of planetary gearing or in special cases also outer rest rotates relative to inner rest. Inner rest may be fixed or, or, or it might also be rotating. In that case, it is better to take this value is 1.2. FR is the net radial load, load acting on the bearing. Whatever load is coming on the gears through the shaft, it is being transferred to the bearing for the load support and calculating those, we can calculate what are the net radial load. FA is the net axial load acting on bearing and X is the radial load factor from catalog and y is the axial load factor, this is also from catalog. Now, this x and y factors, there is detailed recommendations of x and y factors in the catalog. So, once we select a bearing of a particular manufacturer, should it be FAG, should it be escape, should it be national bearing company of India, we should follow their catalog and we should follow these values, but these values are more or less standardized and you will find more or less same in all book. However, this is only an extract which I have given depending on C, C by P where C is the dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing, dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing which is not given here, not written here, we will come to that. So, y may be taken as 1.3, 1.6 and similarly x factor here uh, we have followed the SKF catalog and there they have different series of bearing ELR, 60x, 62, 63, these are ball bearing, RLS, roller bearings etcetera for which factor x can be considered like this rotating inner ring load, stationary inner ring load and factor y is 1.6. This is nominal value what we can consider. However, in calculation if p is found to be less than 1.4 times f r, we can consider p is equal to 1.4 into radial load. Now, this is a typical extract from a catalog, escape catalog of the ball bearing. What we find? This is series of the bearing is 63. Now, 6300 means it is 10 millimeter dia, 0.1 is 12, point uh, sorry 02 is 15. That means, 6302 whether it is escape, fag or any company inside diameter ID will be 15, OD will be 42 millimeter in millimeter 
and width will be 13 millimeter and corner radius will be 1.5. These are standard for all bearings, all bearing company, it will be same. And dynamic load carrying capacity C is 1930 pound, whereas static load capacity 1140 that is C0 1140 pound. So, in no case that a radial component of load should be more than static load carrying capacity. And with the dynamic load we will find out what will be the life. Another thing I would like to mention up to 6303 the shaft diameter 10, 12, 15, 17 but from 6304 it is multiple of 5 that means directly if you multiply 5 with the last 2 digit you will get the id in millimeter so 04 into 5 is 20 so it will become id is 20 millimeter and if you go for 11 then in that case 11 into 5 50, 55 millimeter. Now, if we go for other series 6 4 which will have more load carrying capacity, but with the number 6 3 6 4 11 it will have internal diameter 55, but we will find external diameter will be more than 120 millimeter as well as width may be more corner radius may be a little more you will find load carrying capacities both dynamic and static will be more. So, this is a little idea about what are the bearings. Now, we will go to go for bearing life estimation An intermediate shaft transmits power from previous shaft to the next shaft. So, if we look into this then torque is coming like this and torque is going out. So, load is being transferred in that way. Okay. And the shaft is supported by bearings, teeth contacts experience forces due to torque, we need to calculate reaction loads are taken by the support bearings and shaft is subjected to bending moments we should consider all such things here we have given the dimensions of um, the bearings also pcd and we have mentions also the width are not mentions but we have kept the gap gap r capital r in blue stands for the right hand capital l stands for the left hand so, once the bearing positions are finalized, the reaction loads are calculated and equivalent loads on bearings and bearing life is estimated. So, again we consider the P is the equivalent load on the bearing which is given by C 1 x V F R plus Y F A. In this the design we have considered x will be 1 because here the outer race is fixed. And now we can estimate the life of the bearing and regulation c by p to the power epsilon into 10 to the power 6 regulation, where c is the dynamic load capacity of the bearing selected bearing and p is the equivalent load from the reaction loads that means, whatever load is uh, uh, radial load and axial load and x and y factors we when factors we choose from the catalog. So, this is in regulation and this value is 3 for ball, ball bearing that to the power epsilon that is taken. Uh, 3 for ball bearing and 10 by 3 for 
rolling elements bearing say taper, cylindrical and spherical roller bearing. And life in hours is then estimated by the ln in a revolution divided by rpm of the shaft into 60 this is in hour what are the revelations that will directly give us the life in hours. Okay. So, now we can proceed for calculating the first of all we will calculate the loads from the gear on shaft this is again we recapitulate the from from torque we can find out the tangential load and then we find the normal load and from normal load we find uh, sorry this we in in in, in this tangential direction we find out the um, load and then from there we can find out the normal load that means we are finding finding out this load finally first we calculate this ft in this directions from there we calculate this one then this one and from that value we calculate the other loads and this is given by this trigonometric relations so fr radial load on the gear finally can be expressed as ft sec beta sec alpha n and sin alpha n or simply f n sin alpha n and uh, sorry this 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 actually f t tan psi which is also can be given i this angle is psi also can be given usually better to use this formula f r is this one this is helix angle this is pressure angle whereas for axial load we use this one it is clear that if the helix angle is zero then axial load will be zero so thank you and in next lecture we shall calculate what are the loads coming on bearing